Any questions? I'm going to let you know nothing's changed from 12 hours ago. So <laughs> if there's no questions, fine by me. Okay, Jeff, here in the front on one or two. Jeff Shadell, News Herald. Kevin, uh, your numbers in that first half were really good rebounding. Did, uh, they do, did Golden State do something to make it more difficult in, in that second half? No, I think more than anything, just I was spacing. Um, you know, I find myself you know, floating a little bit sometimes, and uh, that's just due to most of the time in the third quarter or a lot of the times we find ourselves a little stagnant, uh, you know, ball watching or uh, just not moving the ball from side to side. I think that's been, um, you know, one of the things for us throughout, you know, this season and seasons past where, you know, we come out in the third quarter and uh, that tends to happen. So um, I think more than anything, it's at least for me, what I can do is just keep in the same mindset, continue, continue to be aggressive. So, so then how, um, since you know that, I mean, how, is it more difficult to do than to, to, than to say coming up here for game four? Um, yeah, I mean, this is a team you, uh, the Warriors, you really have to continue to put your foot on the gas. Um, you can't let up. So, uh, you know, I think it was uh, not just myself, but everybody. I think it's a mentality. Just uh, continue to stay aggressive, get that ball from side to side. And uh, we've always been better when we've played with pace. And I think that allows Braun to do what he does best, and that's get downhill and attack. And um, you know, play in, in the open court and transition. Over here on the right. Kevin, uh, Reed Forgrave with CBSSports.com. Um, obviously, you come out in game four and you're going to try your guys hardest. But is there any sense of resignation where it's like two out of three of these games, you guys could have won. Mm -hmm. And uh, you did everything you could in those games, and yet the Warriors just find a way. Right. Well, I think that's why they're such a great team. But we uh, we've given ourselves a chance. I know that we'll come out in in game four and and you know really compete. We're not going to give in. And you know as you mentioned, I mentioned last night too. Just the uh, the margin for error is very slim against the Warriors. I mean, you almost uh, I mentioned last night, you almost have to be perfect. There was a lot of things last night that we did well, but there are a couple of blown coverages, a couple of missed shots that uh, and and timely shots that didn't go our way. Uh, that led to, to them winning the game. So, yeah, there's been game one, game three. I know that game two got away from us a little bit, but those are games that we were right there. Standing on the left. Kevin John Gonzalez from The Ringer. Uh, it's obviously <clears throat> been a different sort of season for you guys. Ty was talking about that a little bit, about the difference between coaching guys he's been around for a while and then incorporating some new guys. So I was just wondering in your experience what it's like to play for Ty and then what you saw from him when you were trying to phase in those new pieces. Yeah, I think just uh, at least for me, there's been a, a big comfort level with Ty. I've always had a trust with him as well uh, personally. And then just he's had to deal with a lot. I mean, incorporating a, a bunch of new players, roster overhaul, um, you know, and, and being the head coach of the Cavaliers, we've always had, uh, I've always said we, we thrive under chaos. So we have some uh, sort of sense of that. But, you know, he's taken... Uh, everything in stride. I know he had a little bit of his, his health issues this year, but um, you know he's faced that head on, and um, you know has been able to overcome all those. Did you did you talk to him about the the health issues while he was going through it? And what, what was that? Can you tell us anything about those conversations? Well, I was um, you know pretty happy and not only empathetic, but was able to to you know talk with him about um, you know some of the things that he's gone through uh, off the court. So and being able to. You know, admit that he's been facing some anxiety. I think, uh, you know, and everything that's come out about, uh, at least with Demar and and you know guys like Kelly Oubre and myself that um, deal with that sort of thing off the court. I'm you know extremely happy that he was able to to face that and admit that. And um, you know, it's it's one of those things where uh, I know that his health. Uh, you know, he went through some stuff this year, but I would have never known uh, never known he he was dealing with uh, anxiety like that. So um, he's taken everything in stride. He's he's grown a lot, I think, since he's been here. And you know, it's not just players that are able to grow and 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 get through certain things and and tough parts of their life, but coaches too. I think it's pretty cool. On your left, Dave. Dave McMenamin, ESPN. <clears throat> Kevin, this season's not over. Could go four more games, but if you. We're going to look back at what you guys have done this year. What makes you feel good about 2017, 2018 for the Cavs? Um, you know, just I think we were able to persevere. Um, I know it seems like every time I get up here or, or talk to you uh, or Joe or Jason, and we always talk about how many, how many seasons it feels like it's been uh, this year. But just I think the perseverance, uh, just being able to 
get through what's whatever's been thrown at us. And um, you know, I know that can be said for every single year, but I think this year was definitely the the most trying for a number of those reasons that you know you guys saw throughout. Mark in the middle. Kevin Mark Schwartz, CSPN. Mm -hmm. LeBron has been through it all in 15 years, and I know he always tells you guys follow my lead. What has he shared about this? type of situation either right now or last year when you were in the same predicament? Oh, he just, uh, I know I said earlier, he never takes his foot off the gas. He continues to be a leader. Um, he continues to be LeBron. And, you know, he just, uh, a lot of times he, he is very vocal about it and sometimes he just leads by example. But, you know, he's, he's the type of guy that uh, he wakes up every day. Uh, punches the clock, puts in his time, and you know we follow everything that he does. So um, you know that's it's tough to be in this situation. It's not the situation we want to be in. But you know last year we came out in one game four on our on our home floor. So we're hoping to do the same. Over here on the right, Kevin Paul and Tunis, ESPN Brazil. In 2016, you guys were down three one, won three straight games. Is there anything that you can draw from that experience that might help you? Uh, have a little bit more confidence still in this series and try to do the supposedly impossible? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's you just got I know it's cliche, but you got to take it one game at a time. I think that that's what we did in that series. Um, you know, we were able to, to get game three, obviously lost game four on our on our home floor, but we're able to win the next three. But, you know, for us, that 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 margin of error is very er, margin of error, excuse me, is very small. And, um, you know, we know that if you know, we keep our coverages tight, um, you know, we foul when we're supposed to or when we need to. Um, you know, we switch when we're supposed to. We don't let them slip to the rim, get those easy buckets that are deflating. Um, and then on the offensive end, in the third quarter, we don't get stagnant and play a full 48 minutes of, of moving the ball and playing our game. You know, we'll, really, we'll give ourselves a chance, and we feel like we can win. Christian Crick, USA Today. I'm I just want to go back to mental health for a second. Um, for you, how, what tactics do you use? in times of adversity like this to quiet your mind so that maybe you don't slip into thinking too far into the future or thinking back into the past? Yeah, I think as, as far as uh, basketball goes, it's always been my, my safe place. Every time I've stepped up onto the, onto the floor, I've felt, felt free. And it's a, uh, you know, kind of a way to get away from those stresses. It's a, away from the court where I feel like your mind can play tricks on you. And, um, you know, if, if you try to quiet your mind too much, it's like trying to fall asleep at night. You start thinking of the, the stupid things you've done the last 10 years of your life and, uh, you know, all sort of negative thoughts creep in. But just, uh, you know, be around good, good people, positive energy. Um, and, you know, and a lot of people do different things to manage their, their stress and anxiety and depression. And, um, you know, I have my own coping me mechanisms as well. But I think everybody's different. Is, is meditation a part of that? Meditation is huge, yeah. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, my uncle had done TM now for 40 or 50 years, and uh, that's something he's tried to try to get me into. But there's certain apps that you can use, too, or, you know, listen to, you know, different white noises type of things. I know this is maybe boring for some of you guys, but I love this stuff. So it's, uh, it's something I, you know, really look to, and hopefully I can make an impact, especially this summer moving forward. Last two, Ken in the back left, and then Joe up front. Uh, Kevin Kenberger from Bleacher Report. Um, in this league, there's always somebody plotting to form the next super team to deal with the current one, whether it was you and LeBron and Kyrie teaming up, LeBron going to Miami, KD going to Golden State, and now this summer they'll be the next wave. H how do you view that dynamic as a player? Is that sort of disquieting? Uh, is it, is it a, do you look at it as an opportunity uh, for players to have the chance to move around and, and, and team up? And you know, how, does, how does that strike you? Um, I don't know. I guess I've never really had to answer that question. I feel like, uh, you know, I think if you have a chance to win in this league, you have to go for it. I mean, I can remember when, um, you know, I, I had missed, you know, the playoffs six straight years and I, you know, kind of decided that I wanted to win and, you know, ended up, you know, being in a, a bunch of trade scenarios and ended up here and, you know, winning in 2016, but, um, and teamed up with, LeBron and Kyrie and, you know, all those guys that won on the, the 2016 team. But, you know, and now you see uh, Maury talking about it with the Rockets and, you know, them trying to team up and do whatever they can. They become, you know, what he said the other day, that he's a, a 10 of 10 on obsessed with beating the, the, the Warriors. So, um, you know, that Rockets team is, uh, um, 
you know, like they always say, they're they're built to try to beat them, and they they went to seven seven games in the Western Conference Finals. So I think you'll see a lot of that around the league, and that's always going to be the talk talk because I mean somebody has to uh, you know try and dethrone these guys and um, you know work their way to that. So it's you know we're we're not out of this series. We got another game tomorrow. We need to fight, but I think. Um, to your point, at least in the off season, I think you'll see uh, a number of guys, a lot of movement, and you know that's going to continue to happen in, until there's some sort of parity. Joe, last one on the front. Joe Varden, Cleveland.com. Kevin, as you well know, your name comes up in the summer on about trades and, and things like that. I think you have two years left on your deal, mm-hmm. and it's hard to say what's going to happen here this summer. Do you do you expect? to be back next season or how do you view your your future coming here in Cleveland yeah I mean I'd I'd hope so Um, I've always said that I've always wanted to be here always wanted to win here Um, but as you know with you know it's it's probably going to come up it always does Um, you know it's it's also good to be wanted but you know at the same time um, you know it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens we just don't know there's been so much overhaul and so many things that have happened this year particularly with our team that um, you know, you just don't know when July comes and free agency hits. You know, there could be something interesting, you know, that comes up for this team. And, you know, knowing that it's a business, you just have to, I know that it's cliche to say take it in stride, but, you know, that's just what I've had to do keep my mouth shut, go about my business, and, you know, work and be ready and be prepared for this team next year. Thank you, Kevin. Cool. Thanks, guys.